Welcome to the Husky Football Review. I'm Chad Summers alongside Hewitt Trussell head coach Josh Floyd. Fresh off a an impressive, is the only word I can think of to describe, um, victory over Mount Brook. 28 to 10 last Friday night, big region game. Coach, how do you put into words what your team was able to do last Friday night? It, it, it was a great victory. Uh, you know, starts with Mount Brook, just, just, you know, we have a ton of respect for them, their program, and uh, that was a program that I that I heard about and knew about even from Arkansas before I came down here. And uh, those guys do a great job. And uh, so there's a lot of tradition over there. And, and anytime you go on the road and play a program like that, it's tough, it's tough to get a win. So uh, for us to go over there and our defense play like they did, it was, it was an awesome, um, just awesome night for, for our kids. You know, we made a lot of plays. Um, and and that, that's, what, I mean, that's what our defense is about. I mean, that's what we're trying to teach these guys is to fly around and, and make things happen. And uh, you know, that's what they did on, on Friday night. Had a lot of big plays. Uh, uh, a lot of credit goes to, to, to our kids on defense and, uh, and, and our defensive coaches. I thought they did a great, great job getting our kids ready. Well, the defense all season long from where I've sat has been pretty salty. Now, we've, we've, we've given up some points in a couple of games, but, man, I mean, they, they're hitting people all, all season long, and it was a, a thing of beauty to see it all come together in one game like it did last Friday night. Definitely. I mean, we're, we're worried about their quarterback, um, and he, he was such a good player, big kid. We, we called him Tebow all week in <laughs> practice. I mean, he, you know, he's just a big kid, uh, ran really hard. Um, but our guys flew around. Well, uh, I thought we tackled pretty well, um, and, and so that was obviously a big part of it. Um, you know, offensively, we definitely didn't feel like we had the best night. Uh, definitely. They, they there were some times we, we definitely got some stuff back. Uh, at the same time, I thought when the game was on the line there, uh, you know, at, in the end of the game, we, we, we did a great job. You know, we ended up driving 60, 70 yards to put the game away. And uh, I told our kids, I think that shows a lot of, a lot of growth and, and a lot of character from our team. But because uh, earlier in the year, I think we were finding ways to, to lose. And, and I think Friday night, even though we didn't play our best, uh, offensively, we found a way to win, and uh, you know, we ended up we ran, we ran the ball pretty well on Friday night. Just had some some costly mistakes. And uh, one thing we've still got to do a better job of is when we get a turnover on defense or we get good field position, you know, we, we've got a chance, we got to score a touchdown. And there were a couple times there in the red zone we just didn't, we didn't get it done. Well, it was a thing of beauty. We did get it done. Ultimately, we winning by 18 on the road at a tough place to play, a tough place to get a win, uh, able to do it against the Spartans last Friday night. Let's take a look at the highlights right now um, from the, the Mount Brook Hewitt game last Friday night under the call of Zach Steele. Second down and about four for Mountain Brook. Fake the play that give this time. Carroll back to throw oh. and it is uh -oh. almost intercepted. Devin Reed came up and got his hands on it but couldn't quite haul it in. First downs. Gonna fake the give this time. Thomas looking for somebody open. Uh -oh. He's got oh, Meadows yes, who makes a Meadows. juggling catch. He's inside the 40. Inside the 30, cuts it back and knocked down at the 20-yard line. Big play for the Huskies that time in the nine-yard line of Mountain Brook. This time Thomas will keep. He's up the middle oh, and he's going to go touchdown. for the touchdown. Nice. Number 14. Zach Thomas, Zach like he's Thomas. done all year, takes it in for the Husky and score and they strike first. So second and 11 for Mountain Brook. The fake to give, going to throw over the middle and they got a man wide open. And he's going to take it all the way up to the 47-yard line. Eight, they will motion a man. Carroll back to throw. Just a three-man rush again. A lot of time. Got a man open. Oh, what a catch. Wow. A one-handed grab. Carroll pass complete. The number four, Drew Odom. He's a not sevens. Been doing a lot of play action. They'll play action again here. This time there's a big rush by Williams and uh, going to try to make the corner. He won't get in. He get the first down. Looks like first down on the two. Carroll on the keep. Going to take it in for the score. Oh, he fumbles, fumbles the ball. It's picked up and going the oh, other way. That's Deontay. Deontay's got it. Deontay's gone, across baby. the 30. 40, he's, 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 he's gone. Clock. Forget about it. No flags on the field, folks. Wow. Huge play, huge hit. I thought he got in. Backfield with Zach Thomas. Thomas this time on the little run pass option. He's got Cash, he's got some room to run. Grayson nice. Cash is all the way up to the 50. And a Husky Thomas first down. The Spartans will motion, motion a man into the backfield. They'll play action to him. Now a high throw. Oh, big nice. hit that time by Jarrett Nelson. Nice break by Jarrett. Fake punt. Like fake punt. And he's going to oh, have a first down. 
all the way down to the Husky 24-yard line. From the left hash, it's a tough. It's up, it's high, and it looks good. Yeah, Looked like a mortar shot right there. We'd be content with a 14-3 lead. Thomas, little run pass option again. He's got a little bit of room. He's going to slide down, fumble the football. Fumble on the play. And that's not the what you want to see. Five, Carroll on the keeper. He's going to take it in this time and hang on to it. And Number Mountain Brook has their first touchdown of the night. Right Many touches in the first half, and he's been a key cog in that offense. This time, Thomas on the zone keep, and he's got a little bit of room. He's, oh, he's going to break the outside. There he Thomas goes. across the 50, 40. It's a oh, foot race. Away. One man to beat. He's going to cut it back, and he's going to go. Forget about it, Zach Thomas. 77 yards for the Husky score. TJ McGettigan out to kick again very quickly. This time he'll hang it a little high, a little shorter. He'll be More taken at about line. the 10. He'll break it. Uh -oh. He's going to break his contain. TJ's going to get a hand on him. And now akfaji has got him at the 45. And Mountain Brook gets a pretty decent return here. Full formation. Play action. Looking to throw. Should he pit? Oh. Thought Jarrett Nelson had a shot at that one, but the receiver kind of stepped in front, and Mountain Brook's got a first down at the Husky 26-yard line. Got running about an eight-yard. So first and ten Spartans from their own 29-yard line. Empty backfield. Carroll throwing again. Now he's going to take off and run, and he's wrapped up by Jason Williams. Ball comes loose. Picked up. Oh, there. Picked up by I number 72 soft. for the Huskies. That's oh, Horsley. And the Huskies will have a first down, forcing the turnover. Street again on the carry. He'll go off tackle. He'll have a big hole and a first down inside the 10, all the way down to the seven yard line. Gary and Street on the carry. Well, Thomas just a straight drop. Looks to throw through and deep for the end zone for Kyle Moore, and it's intercepted. Well, that's about the worst thing that could have happened on that play. Hard line. Carroll, man behind him, they will play action. Looking for somebody to throw to. Oh, that ball is tipped oh, yeah. and incomplete. And Dalton Meadows had a pick six, couldn't hang on. Empty backfield. This little shovel pass on the inside, and that is blown up. Bailey McElwain. Ball game, so if the Huskies can get a nice drive here, they may can salt this thing away. They will give to Iggy on the corner. He's got the corner. He crosses the 40. He'll be knocked down at the 49-yard line. Uh, I'm glad they ran it there because both were in the backfield with Zach. This time they will give to Moore. Moore's across the 35, down inside the 30 to the 29, and he'll have a first down. Number 20, Kyle Moore. Five on the play clock. Zach back to throw. No, it's a draw all the way. Zach's across the 15, inside the 10, breaks a tackle. He's going to have another first down. I believe so. First down, Huskies with 431 left. We'll have Street in the backfield with him here. They will give to Street inside. He's gone. Touchdown, Huskies. Number five, Jerry and Street. And that Four might send the wine and cheese crowd across the way to the exits. Touchdown. Huskies lead at 27-10. Extra point on the way. First down. Carroll. Kind of fake the run, throw over the middle. It's going to be intercepted. Just get down. Jared right. Nelson, and he will be tackled at the 49 yard line. Carroll pass is intercepted by number nine, Jared Nelson. And this is their victory formation here. No, nope, <laughs> they're going to get to Kyle Moore. Kyle's going to make the corner, and he's going to take it inside the 20. Stay, Stay in bounds. bounds. He's inside the 10. You can see a lot of people come out that don't normally come to a game. And from what I understand, it holds about 7,000. I anticipate 7,000 fans being there. They're going to need it for the next two ball games. The Huskies taking on Hoover and then Clay Chalkville, the big rivalry game. And that'll bring half the county. Time ticking away here. They're already shaking hands out on the field. Well, once again, 28 to 10, uh, the final score. And uh, Coach, you know, is, is, a, is a father when you see your, your sons play and, and they, they make a play. I know you're, you're, you know you're proud when I see my daughter excel in sports and stuff like that when I've seen her, her work. How does it feel as a coach to see your team grow up the way they have this year? I know we've been competitive all year, but I mean, week eight, 
to do what they did last Friday night when, when the sure. chips are down and, and you got to make it happen, how does that make you feel as a coach? Sure. Well, it, it, it's a similar feeling to, to being a dad. I mean, we, we spend so much time with these guys. I mean, we we, uh, we say we're a family, and, you know, sometimes that's not fun. Sometimes they don't like us very much because we're, <laughs> we're getting after them. And, and you know, it's kind of like it is kind of like a family. You know, you, you fight a little bit, but then at the end of the day, you're on the same team and, you, and you're striving for the same goal. And so uh, I think it's been a lot of fun to see these guys improve every single week. Um, and they, they've come a long way. You know, it, it just, they're put in su such a tough situation. Um, you know, to not really have a head coach in spring ball and then to not really know till, till the summer, you know, not have, not have staff. So it, it put a lot of pressure on these kids, but they've done an awesome job. Uh, and when we started this thing, we just said, hey, we're going to get better every single week, see what happens in the end. And, uh, you know, and, and we're here right now. I mean, we, we still control our own destiny for, for a shot to get in the playoffs. And, and uh, we've got two games left against two great opponents. Uh, get, get to open our stadium this week. And so there's a lot of, a lot of excitement. And uh, I just told our guys to enjoy it. I mean, you only open the stadium one time. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, let's enjoy it, have a good time. But uh, know that you know, 7 p.m. Friday night, there's, there's a game to play. Absolutely. Again, seven days later, win or lose, we got to play again. But uh, but last Friday night, talk about the just the impact of the, of the touchdown, the, the fumble return. Uh, we're up seven to nothing. Mountain Brook is about to take it in to, to, to score, to, to tie it up, and all of a sudden, ball pops loose, and we're off to the races. How big a play is that in 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 high in any level of play, but in, in a football game? Sure. I mean, it, it was one. The, the most amazing plays I, I've ever seen and uh, you know as far as the momentum shift I mean it's a 14 point swing and uh, I, I think I really want to go back to a few plays before that uh, Jarrett Nelson makes a tackle where the quarterback looks like he's breaking away and might score and uh, you know I think it's one of those lessons where, where you learn I mean, you don't ever give up on a play and uh, he knocks him out I think the three or four yard line well then a couple of plays later they have trouble getting in I think it was a third down when, when they uh, thought they, you know, he almost got in, and Jared Nelson again comes in there, pops the ball loose at the half yard line, and uh, Deontay just obviously was able to see it, and uh, you know he didn't think twice, man, he picked that thing up and it took off, and, and it, was, it was fun to watch our guys run down the field because I, I mean well, we were out there, Devin Reed was out there lead blocking, and, and he just had a lot of guys hustling to make sure he, he took it back. So uh, crazy play, uh, one of those momentum shifting plays, and uh, just just a big time play by Deontay. You know, it, it's great to see your seniors make those kind of plays, and uh, I think Deontay's really stepped up the last few weeks. No doubt, no doubt. And of course, in the third quarter, it's 14-10 at halftime. The game's still in question. Talk about the, the touchdown run, the long touchdown run by, by Zach. Sure, uh, we came out there, had a uh, had a big stop on defense there. I think it was a three and out. Uh, we're coming out from halftime, and so, uh, you know, we, we changed a little bit at halftime what we are gonna do offensively. Um, nothing huge, just kind of made a few adjustments, and. Zach just took over on that run, and you know Zach's an explosive player that uh, you know that can make a lot of big plays, and he, he took off on that one. Now, I mean, that was a pretty impressive run. He just you know he left him, and so um, you know he's a threat to score uh, every time he's got the ball in his hands. And uh, you know I, I think I mean those two plays are probably the plays of the game: De Deontay's fumble recovery and and, uh, and Zach's touchdown. And I think those are. No, those end up being the difference. And you're right. The, the threat that Zach gives you as an, as on offense, I know as a coach, it, it's, a, he's, it's a dream to have a quarterback like this. Of course, we speaking of which, I saw on game day Saturday morning some footage of you at Shiloh with Coach Malzahn. Uh, they, they showed a little bit of that. So I, 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 that. I know you had some wheels in high school too. But I like Zach. <laughs> I like Zach. Zach, I mean, sir, he's like a Cam Newton. I mean, it really, every time he, he, he has the ball, he, he could go, and he's surrounded by great players too. Again, it's not it's not just Zach, but but it it is a, a, a luxury to have a quarterback like that. You can put the ball in his hands. Sure. And, and, uh, There's a, I mean, he's one of those kids that's fun to call plays uh, for him just because he can do so many things. And uh, you know that I think what, what's been great for, for, is we've had other guys step up. You know, and and, and Jerry and Street's a big weapon in the backfield. Kyle Moore's a big weapon in the backfield. I mean, that, that, those, I think I mean I would take our backfield against anybody in this state, and uh, I, I I believe that because those guys are all three big time playmakers and uh, you know it's, it's been fun to see those guys progress uh, our receivers have gotten better throughout the year our offensive line has really gelled and, uh, and, and done a great job and uh, well, when you can run the football you know you can play with anybody so um, I've been proud of the way we've come along yeah well we're gonna need those playmakers uh, this Friday night no. Uh, again, as, as Coach mentioned, as we open the stadium, and uh, right now we're going to meet a couple of people who've been pivotal uh, to the stadium uh, getting opened and traffic getting uh, flowed where it, like it needs to. And I'm standing here 
with Assistant Principal Barry Alfin. He's uh, been the point person here for the stadium, so when you get here this Friday night, uh, pending uh, review and all the inspections go the way they're supposed to, uh, this is the man you want to thank for all his hard work. And I know you have a great team that, that's helped you, but, uh, but this is truly a, a, a beautiful, beautiful facility. Well, it, it, it really is, and it's very deserving for this community because it's such a great community. Uh, and we're expecting to fill it up Friday night. So it's going to be wonderful. Now, when people get here Friday night, what, what can they expect when they, when they walk in the stadium? Well, uh, I'm sure you'll do a panorama of the stadium, but uh, there's, two, there's going to be two ways to get in here. Uh, you come down uh, uh, Husky Parkway by in front of the school, park in the school parking lot, walk across the bridge, or you can come off uh, Trustwell Clay Road and come in front of the Civic Center. If you come in front of the Civic Center, there's general parking, but also to the left of the Civic Center will be the Silver Husky parking, uh, which were, is where the patrons uh, will be parking. We're also going to do a shuttle service from the middle school. So we'll have uh, school buses coming across with uh, uh, spectators and so forth coming to the game. Um, but it's going to, you know, we're going to have a huge crowd. I mean, the capacity for the stadium is uh, 6,000. It's about 1,800 on the visitor side and about, um, what's the difference there, almost 4,000 on the home side. Um, we've got plenty of restrooms. we got huge concession stands uh, and everybody's on deck. We're going to have a great first night and open program. Uh, we will have a... Uh, ribbon cutting ceremony at 6.30 before the kickoff at 7. So please get here, uh, be here for that ribbon cutting. Well, this is definitely gonna be a must attend event. If you're a native Trustvillian or new to the area, you don't wanna miss this facility. Uh, we've had a, a chance to be here all season long as we've shot these shows as, as they've been getting the, the work ready. And I mean, it is as nice a high school stadium as I've ever stepped in. I mean, this is nice a college stadium as, as any <laughs> I've ever been in. So. Uh, truly an exciting exciting time. I'm going to get to tell my daughter too, I was excited. You walk in, as soon as you walk in, and there's two concession stands on either side, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of nachos. My youngest loves nachos, so we'll, we'll be having nachos this Friday night. But, uh, but Barry, thank you so much for, for all your work, for your team. Um, I know you're excited to, to kind of get this thing open and, and move right. on to the next thing, aren't you? I, I, absolutely. I mean, uh, this is a big week for all of us, opening up the bridge at the school, and then, of course, opening the stadium. And, uh, but this is, uh, I mean, uh, you gave me too much credit, Barry Davis and Dr. Neal and all those are the people that really put this together. But uh, thank you again and, and, and um, y'all do a great job as well. We're, Absolutely. we're very appreciative, Coach Floyd. Oh, he's, he's great. We're, we're excited about the season, excited about this Friday night. Again, you don't want to miss it. And like he said, plenty of parking. Um, I know that's been kind of the, the discussion where we're going to park. Hey, trust me, there's plenty. I just walked across. I parked at the stadium, walked across over here. It's a beautiful little walk, short walk across the, yeah. the, the river through a little rock in the, in the rivers I went across yeah. and, uh, and just a short, short jaunt. So looking forward to being here Friday night. Thank you for, for you and, Thanks, and, your, and your team and everything uh, that's gone into this, this facility. It's definitely going to be one you want to be, be here for. I'm joined now uh, with by Officer Roberson. He's the school resource officer, or the SRO for the high school, and uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about traffic flow. And we've already talked about a little bit about parking, but what's the best way to get to the stadium if you're not familiar with with where we are? If you're coming from uh, or the visiting team, the best to go 59, get off at Deerfoot Parkway, and go to. Um, turn right off of Deerfoot, on the Deerfoot, then turn left on the Husky Parkway, and then come down to the high school and park in the lot. And you'll be able to walk across the bridge off Husky Parkway and come to the stadium. Um, if you live in Trustful, I'd start out coming on Trustful Clay and park in the uh, Civic Center parking lot. You can park in the front or the side of it, of Civic Center's property if you're a member of Silver Husky, your, your designated area is in front of the stadium. Um, after the game, there'll be officers out everywhere to help you get out of the lots. Uh, the bridge will be closed after the game to allow the mass of people going to their cars uh, at the high school. And then once you get to your car and come out, you just go out Husky Parkway to uh, Deerfoot Parkway, back to the interstate. 
Of course, after the game, there's going to be a mass party because we're going to be celebrating a historic <laughs> Hewitt win over, over Hoover this Friday night, hopefully. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, Officer Robeson, thank you for all yes, the work sir. you do and all your, your, your team and your officers. When you get here, you'll see uh, officers directing everywhere. You'll see the blue lights and uh, it'll be a good night one for other, sure. One other thing, though, and uh, due to just security purposes anyway, uh, rules have changed as far as coming into the stadium or entering the stadium itself, uh, no outside drink or food, and your bags may be subject to be searched. So just be aware of that as you, as you enter the stadium. And I don't know what that is behind me, but I sure am glad there's an officer standing right here. So, <laughs> But it's going to be a good, good night this Friday night, and uh, we look forward to seeing you, and, and thank you again for, for all you do for us here at, at Hewitt Trustful uh, this Friday night and, and, uh, and every day when, right. you're, when you're there on our campus. Well, Coach, as we wrap up, again, congratulations on a great win. Congratulations so far on a great season. I know it's, it's, uh, it's, been, it's, been, a, it's been a roller coaster ride all, all year long. It's been a fun one. Um, sure. We've said all season long, it's, the price of admission to a Hewitt game is, is, is well worth the six bucks, I mean, <laughs> to get in because it's so fun. I mean, there's, you never know what's going to happen. We're never out of a game. You know, we're, we're always in it, and, and we're going to need that, uh, that kind of momentum to continue again this Friday night as Hoover comes to town. Well, I, it obviously doesn't get any easier. Uh, it's, it's, it's a huge opponent here. I mean, everybody knows about Hoover High School, and we obviously have great respect for those guys. I mean, they're, they're not just a region program or state program. I mean, it's a national program. You know, it's a team that's nationally ranked every year. They've got Division One players all over the field. I mean, they've, they've got, you know, tons and tons and tons of talent. Um, so so they they're, they're obviously present a lot of a lot of problems uh, just because the, they're so athletic. Uh, the defensively, they're they're huge. Um, their linebackers are really big. You know, I've got a guy going to Alabama, a guy going to Auburn. Um, have a lot of speed on defense. Uh, offensively, they, they've got, you know, really two running backs um, that, that are really, really good, some big time receivers. And so, I mean, they've they, they pretty much got it all. Um, you know, that, that being said, our kids are going to come out here and play hard. And, uh, you know, I think I know we're going to have a great week of practice. You know, there's not, it's not hard to get your kids up for, for games like this. Obviously, there's a lot on the line. Like I said, there's a lot of enjoyment on the new stadium and all that, but at the end of the day, we, we got to try to get a win. So, um, you know, we're going to play hard and see what happens. We could be playing this game in the Piggly Bigly parking lot, and your team would be up for this game. Sure, but, sure. Like I said, yeah. it's, it's easy to get them up for a game like this. Sure. I mean, and, and, and these <laughs> kids, I mean, they've obviously heard about Hoover. Um, I'm, I'm sure their whole life, and so uh, I know Hewitt hasn't played Hoover a ton, um, but, but it, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, like I said, we're excited about the opportunity. I think it's a good measuring stick to, to see where we're at as a program, and uh, you know, because at the end of the day, you're trying to get to their level. To be honest, I mean that that's what you, I mean. Everybody's shooting for for, for those guys, and so uh, you know, Coach Nebo does a heck of a job over there. And I, I know those guys will be ready to play. Any chance that a certain granddad in Arkansas is going to come see his grandsons this we, weekend? We, we've got some family coming in <laughs> for, uh, for this one, so uh, it, it'll be fun. Uh, I think we might see uh, Pastor Floyd this weekend, too. It's going to be a great game this uh, Friday night, 7 o'clock, here at the new uh, stadium, the uh, Hewitt Trussell Husky Field, uh, not Jackwood Stadium. We're, we're opening up the... the Open up the big stadium for, for real this Friday night. We're excited. Ribbon cutting, uh, I, as you've already heard, at 6.30. And uh, the game will begin at 7. Look forward to seeing you here. We need a capacity crowd uh, to help the Huskies on to victory as we uh, coronate this, uh, this new stadium with, with a big victory. Coach, look forward to seeing this Friday night. And uh, as we get ready for the Bucks of Hoover, right here where we're standing this Friday night. It's a beautiful day right now as we're shooting. It's going to be a beautiful night, hopefully, this Friday night. Uh, and again, we look forward to seeing you here. We need a big crowd uh, here to, to support the Huskies as the Bucks come to town. Um, number one in Class 7A. Uh, Going to need a big capacity crowd to, to kind of help Hewitt along and, uh, and give uh, Hoover our best shot. But again, as we, as we wrap up today, we always want to remind you about game DVDs, uh, both single game and season packages you can get by emailing hchsaf at gmail.com. Email that email address as you see on your screen, and uh, you can give us some information about how to order uh, DVDs of this season, which has been an amazing season to watch, uh, a keepsake for years to come. Again, this has been the Husky Football Review. For Karen Johns and Coach Josh Floyd, I'm Chad Summers. Uh, it's been a great season. We've got two more to go. Go Huskies!